Today we're going to put a high speed spindle on the new Avid CNC machine and we're going to do it using parts that were not intended for this application, naturally. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well the new Avid CNC machine is shaping up nicely, but before we can cut anything we're going to need a spindle. And before we can mount a spindle, we're going to need a spindle mount. Avid actually makes a tramming spindle mount for this machine, but as usual, it doesn't quite fit my application. So today, we're going to make it fit. This is the Avid tramming spindle mount. I already have it attached to the Z plate here, but of course I don't have the spindle on it. Um, this plate is two parts. So there's a part that attaches to the Z slide itself with T-nuts. And then there's a tramming portion on the front that's bolted to the spindle that then has the flexibility to tilt left and right to tram the spindle. So if I loosen these two screws, these are just M8s that go into the base plate. And then there is a shoulder screw here that is shouldered out but still allows this to pivot. And then this down here is a cam. So if I loosen this and then rotate this cam, you should be able to see that it's actually tilting the plate back and forth. So it can tilt it down or up on the right hand side and there's motion in the slots of these screws to allow that to happen. So this, um, this cam is just a standard hardware part. You can order these from McMaster Car and it's just a, it's just a, a bushing that's drilled off center so that as you rotate it, it pushes this slot up and down and there's freedom in these other two screws so that you can tilt the spindle to get it square, and then lock it down. Now, that may be a little bit loose, even with the cam. We'll see how hard it is to actually tram a spindle, but um, it's better than nothing, so this is what we're gonna start with. So let me take this apart. And I'll go ahead and take the shoulder screw out as well so I can flip this around. Now the way this is intended to attach to the spindle is to have threaded holes in the spindle and to just put, I think, M8 screws through from the backside. And you can see it's drilled for a whole bunch of different spindles, none of which I have. The spindle that I have actually has holes in the spindle flange, and so it needs threaded holes in this plate. Fortunately, I think there's enough room to fit those in, so we'll go ahead and put those in. The other thing that I'm not super crazy about with this is you can see there are screws in here with T-nuts to hold it to the axis. And for whatever reason, those screws are in the center. I think it was just to make it easier so that you'd avoid um, any kind of interference with any of the other holes, but I really would prefer to have these screws out in the outer slots so that I get more uh, torsional stability. Because the way this is, because it's bolted here and then the front flange is bolted out here and then the motor will be attached, the spindle will be attached to that, there's a lot more opportunity to flex because these slots here is where this extrusion is attached to the, the slide. And so you'll have the expanse from there where it's attached over to here where the base plate is attached and that can flex. And then you have from here out to the side where the front plate is uh, attached and that can flex. I think it would be much easier to have it anchored right here. I think there's room. My plan is to go ahead and put in some extra holes to make that possible. But because of the way this works, because of the width of the spindle that goes in here and the location of these screws and the size of the screw heads, particularly on the shoulder bolt and on the cam, it's gonna be super tight. So whenever I get in a situation like this, I always go back to the computer, build a CAD model, and test it to see if it'll work. In fact, I built the CAD model before I bought this. Let's go take a look. This is Fusion 360, and what I have here is a solid model of the Avid tramming spindle mount. We've got the back plate that attaches to the Z-axis and the front plate that attaches to the spindle with the slot down here for the cam and the oversized hole up here for the shoulder bolt. Now I didn't have to model this, they actually make the solid model available on their website for download. Uh, but what I did do is I had to go out to McMaster Car and I found the correct shoulder bolt and the correct hex flanged eccentric is what they call it. 
to fit in the slot down here and lined all of that up with the holes so that I could get a realistic model of exactly how much space I have between this shoulder bolt and the cam as the cam rotates. Now I actually have a model of the spindle that I made a year or two ago when I put it on my G0704 and I just brought that in and laid it on here. Now it is not centered. What I was trying to do is get it just as close as I possibly could to this screw and I think there's five thousandths of an inch of clearance here. I did confirm that the dimension on this screw and the dimension of the model from uh, McMaster Carr is they are the same and so I put it just as close to that screw as I possibly could and oriented it vertically and then if you come down here and look at this cam as long as the cam stays sort of in its outward position where the eccentric is to the outside to make the adjustment I think it will just clear so I went ahead and took these holes that I have modeled in the spindle and I just trust that I modeled this accurately. They're not a nice convenient nominal distance apart. I just trusted that I measured those a couple of years ago and modeled them accurately and I just mapped those back down to the plate and I put in four threaded holes where those need to go. Then for the back plate, um, these are the notches that were in the stock uh, plate for mounting it to the axis and I added these four countersunk holes and they are 60 millimeters off center to match the slots in the extrusion and I spaced them in here so that they would not interfere and not break out into these existing holes. Um, gave a little bit of preferential clearance for the threaded hole here because I require that for strength. This hole isn't going to be used and that should allow this to then mount to the uh, to the axis. So all I really need to do is make those four holes and then drill and tap these four holes. So I went ahead and put together some drawings. This is of course the front flange with the uh, with the cam notch in it and the stuff is centered top to bottom around a center line 42.86 millimeters off the center and then I took all the other dimensions from the left because these are not centered on the part. They're positioned in just where they had to go to make room for the spindle. And then of course for the uh, extra mounting holes so I can use the outside T-slots, those are centered. So I've got my diagram with my dimensions of what needs to be uh, drilled, what needs to be tapped, what needs to be counterboard. And we can just take this out to the shop and modify the existing spindle mount and make it work. Now once again because this is so tight, I wanna be sure this is gonna fit. Is my 3D model accurate? I think so. Um, I actually modeled it off of the, I modeled the spindle myself and the model for the plates I actually got from Avid. But before I start drilling these things and get into operations that I can't undo without spending money, um, I wanna do one more sanity check. So I took the, the model that I have for the base plate of the spindle and I 3D printed a plastic part with the holes in the right position. So then I can hold this up here, see if it fits, and in fact it does. If I hold it maybe just a few thou off of that shoulder screw, which is where I intend to put it, looks like it's centered. I think I am going to have the clearance I need over here on the cam. This is not, you know, really a design tool. This is a sanity check, and my sanity check says that looks okay to me. So I am going to go ahead and just mark these screw holes. I am not going to make these holes using these marks, but I'm going to use these marks again as a sanity check so that when I dial it up on the mill, I can tell if it looks like it's in the right place. So I've got marks where those holes are going to go. I think we're ready to just take this over to the mill and make some new holes. Okay, I've got my drawing here and I've got my part and I'm trying to make sure I've got it the right direction because this part is not symmetric because of the notch in it. I do have it the same direction here. Everything looks right where I have the blue holes. Looks sane. So I'll clamp that in there and use an edge finder. 
and we need to find the center vertically, but we're gonna be measuring in from the left-hand side. So I'll center up with the half function. Boy, there's not much meat there. Let me hang it out a little bit so I've got something to, something to dial in on. And let's get this going. Okay, so I got my zero. I had to switch back to Imperial to take half of this uh, edge finder, which is a 200 thou tip. So we should be zeroed up on the edge in the center of the part. And now the first holes are 27.61 millimeters over. And above and below 42.86. And let's see, how sane does that look? Hey, that looks like that's right in the middle of my spot. Let's, um, let's drill some holes. And I'm using uh, A9 as lubricant for cutting aluminum. And uh, this is the tap drill size for M8, one and a quarter, which in this case, because I don't have metric drills, is 17 64ths. Okay, and then we're gonna power tap those M8 by one and a quarter. I bought this tap, I'm smelling it. I bought this tap on Amazon and it smells like licorice. I have no idea why. It's just a, uh, this is a machine tap, a gun tap, so it's a spiral point. M8 by 1.25, yep, had to make sure that's correct. We'll put it in here, drop the, drop the mill into low gear and Power tap it, in reverse, of course. Probably wanna go a little bit faster than that. Just go ahead and clean up the tops of the threads. My little Noga countersink. Perfect. Oily, but perfect. Here's the other half of the spindle, and the part that I'm gonna do is symmetric, but you can see these holes here are for locating pins that are on the back of it. So we'll go ahead and line it up the same direction, and the counter bore is on this side.
And on this one, everything is located off of the center lines. Okay, now these are gonna be through holes, so I'm using a larger drill. This one is a letter T, which should be a clearance hole for M8. In fact, I can check it. It is slightly larger than the other M8 through holes, but the other M8 through holes just barely will manage the pilot here. And without metric drills, this is as close as I can get. 356 and a half on the drill, and I need 353. So that's as close as I'm gonna get with the drills that I have to fit the counter bore. Okay, now we need to put in the counter bores. And this is just a standard M8 counter bore. So what I plan to do is use the table to measure this. According to the drawing, this needs to be nine millimeters deep. So what I'm gonna do is come down here and set my stop because I have inexplicably not yet put the DRO on the quill. I don't know why. Maybe it's like I'm working on other things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the knee. Just a touch there. I'm gonna bring this down hard against the stop. And then I'm gonna raise the knee until I see it start to cut. Okay, there it is. So now I'm gonna set my Z zero. I'm gonna raise this back up. Now I'm gonna raise the Z nine millimeters. And my tripod's in the way, so I'm doing this in stitches. Okay, so I've got my stop set and then I've raised the knee nine millimeters. So if I just plunge and take the quill all the way down, I should be nine millimeters deep. Let's make sure I'm in the right position. Yep. Okay. Yep, that is gonna work great. Is this big enough to clean up the top edge? It is. Just barely. Okay, these are the parts. I've got my counterboard holes to put my uh, anchor screws out near the edges. Let's start with that. Now, technically, there's no reason I couldn't use eight screws and use the center slots as well, though I don't think it really matters that much. And these pins go in here and align against that T-slot. I'll align it to, the, to this side 
and I want it to clear this by about two and three quarters, which is about how much the spindle will stick down. That way the bottom of the extrusion and the bottom of the spindle will be about the same and they'll have the same clearance. So that'll give me the most flexibility, I believe. And then if later I find I need to do something different, I can. Now this will go on this way and I've got my four threaded holes ready to go. Okay. I don't like that there's a little bit of play in this, but maybe once I get it all in position, I'll put a little washer underneath it to lock it down. I'll start by just trying to position this as vertical as I can. That seems about right, right there. Okay, now of course the whole point of this is the spindle. Got that right here. I've been trying to avoid handling it as much as I can because it's heavy. Just make sure the back is clean, and it is. It looks like I just barely have clearance. So the CAD model was right. And these screws seem to be lining up perfectly. Now I'm using uh, M8125 screws here, 30 millimeters long, and I found that I need to take about a millimeter off because this is almost exactly 30 millimeters but they were coming through and bottoming on the extrusion, so I just took them to the, the uh, bench grinder and just knocked a little bit off. Okay, <laughs> that looks like a spindle. Uh, let me move the camera over here so you can see the cam and let's try adjusting it. Let's just loosen these two screws. And loosen this and then this cam. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see that tilting the spindle back and forth. It's, it's subtle but not a lot of motion is actually needed in order to cram something like this. So we'll go all the way to there and all the way to there and we have clearance. That is awesome. Okay, well, 
Guys at Avid asked for feedback on this spindle and on the spindle mount and how this spindle worked on the machine and how that fit. So I will get my drawings back to them and maybe they'll incorporate those holes into future versions of this. Who knows? Well, I've got a bunch of wiring to do for the spindle. I've got to hook up the wiring and the pneumatics to it, get the whole machine trammed in, and we'll continue working on that next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.